This part will learn what to do with systems of lenses, so something with more than one lens. In the end, a system of many lenses is best thought of as a sequence of single lenses. And it's actually no harder than doing a single lens because the basic technique is that you use the image of one lens as the object of the next lens. So the procedure to deal with it is that for each lens, you use the location of the object to find the image. Once you've done that, you forget about that lens and the object that created the image. The next step is to make the image that you just found the object for the next lens. So let's look at an example. Here we have um, two lenses. So here's our first lens and the second lens. Um, here's the focal points of the second lens. These are the focal points of the first lens. Then here's our object. Okay, so we can construct, we always do, the rays coming off of here using the principal rays. So we see that the the object or the image is back here. All right. So now I could erase these guys if we wanted. Just ignore these things completely. Because what we know is that the light coming off of that object, or this image now, it's, it becomes our object, the light coming off of that comes out as if it came from this point. Okay, we know that it doesn't actually travel along these parts here. It comes here from this object. But to this lens over here, it doesn't know that. All it sees is these rays coming out, and they look like they come from that point. So that's why we can treat them one at a time, and we get to ignore this first object now and that lens. We can just focus on this. So now we can construct, as we always do, we'll take a ray coming in parallel and follow it out. We could take the ray through the center. Uh, we could also take maybe this more useful the ray that goes through there. Again, I'm going to stress the light doesn't actually follow this. It's not actually going there. When they actually came from the stores here. Okay, so we've successfully found our new image. So in this case, that's the last. Um, 
the last image so we can stop. If there was further lenses, we'd just continue. All right, so we can also do this with numbers. And the important part here is that if we let this distance be the distance between the lenses, well, we can see that the optic distance for the second lens is that separation minus the image distance of the first. Now, in this example we did, the image distance is negative. So it's actually, we want to subtract that negative distance. So that makes sense here. If the image had been over on this side instead, it would have been more obvious that we needed this subtraction. Okay, but the subtraction works in both cases. All right, so let's go ahead and do this algebraically. So we use the thin lens equation to find the first image. It's going backwards in the direction it came. The separation here, I think, is 120. So using this equation now, we can find the next object. So the next focal length is 60. The object for the second one so 120 minus a negative 60, so we get 180. We can verify that here. We can see the distance from the lens to the object is 180. All right, so that then, in turns, allows us to find the second image. Okay, so the same goes with the magnification equations. You just stack them up, do one at a time, and you get to the end. Now, I mentioned the last time that it's actually possible to have a negative object distance. So you can kind of see how that would happen if this is smaller than that. So what that means is that you've placed... Um, let's suppose we just do a quick something here you make an image of the in the first lens okay so this is our image then you place the lens on that side of it okay 
So how do we deal with that? It ends up that the thin lens equation works just fine as long as we treat this as a negative distance. And this equation here makes that work out just right. Okay, so um, everything's fine. So let's go ahead and see if we can make a real image with a diverging lens. So we have the same equation. And the difficulty here is that we have a diverging lens, so we know f is negative. So this part has to be negative. In order to have a real image, we need this to be positive. The image distance must be positive. So you can see now why having a negative object distance it's going to help because we're subtracting it. So it is possible if this is bigger in magnitude than this, then we, and, and the object distance is negative, then we'd be okay. Okay, so what that means is that this, the magnitude of this guy has to be smaller than the magnitude of that. So here's an example. We could take the object distance as negative 40 in the Focal length is negative 50. If we try that, do the calculation, we end up finding a real image distance of 200 centimeters. Now, that all seems like a bit of magic with negative numbers, so let's try to construct it. Oops, I meant to erase this. Okay, so here's our lens. This is a diverging lens. With a focal length of minus 50. And we've placed the object at negative 40. So there has to be another lens system that creates that there. Because you can't actually have the object there. Okay, because the light is here in this picture is coming from the left. So the object, the real object, has to be someplace to the left, the source of the light. But if we hadn't put this lens there, it would have formed an image at this spot. But we've put the lens there in the way it doesn't get to form that image. So it's a virtual object. All right, but the nice thing is we know that the rays of light come towards that point from the left-hand side. So we can get the rays that we need. Okay, so for example, the one that goes through the center. Uh, must have come directly this way. There we go. And I'm going to keep following it the other way. Ooh, that's hard. Let's start from here. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, so it's right through the center of the lens. Now what we'd like is something going towards this focal point. So, if I've drawn it, looks like that goes... This way. Okay. So if light comes in this way along this line. will bend out parallel to the axis. 
Okay, so those two alone ought to do it. We can see that we're getting the image over here. The third ray would be the one coming in parallel. We could add it. Okay, so that's should be coming towards that point. It never gets there because it hits the lens. So it comes this far. And hits the lens. And then it diverges out. As if it came from the focal point. Okay, so again, all those rays come together at that point, and we have an image. So the moral of the story is there's really nothing new. You just have to be careful with the plus and minus signs and do one lens at a time.